Welcome back. I'm uh, going to go over the uh, emissions again today. We're going to move onward away from the O2 sensors and we're going to move on to how the ECM responds to that data. So O2 feedback means that the ECM is receiving information from the oxygen sensors. And as you've seen, if the content of the oxygen is high, then the graph would be go low for the oxygen content. So low is lean, high O2. Now the next part of this is how the engine responds, how the ECM is gonna change the fuel delivery. And that is called fuel trims. Fuel trims basically means that if I see a lot of oxygen, my only option to get back to stoichiometric ratio is to add fuel. And if I don't see a lot of O2, I'm lean or rich on fuel, I think, then I'm gonna take away fuel. What you have to remember is that the ECM is only seeing the oxygen content. So again, think of it this way. If you're measuring the oxygen content and you see a lot of oxygen and your program says to add fuel to meet that ability uh, to get to stoichiometric ratio, then you're going to add fuel because you really don't see anything else but O2. Um, that could be wrong because if you don't have spark in a cylinder, you don't have any fire in the cylinder and the oxygen isn't consumed. So it's gonna add more fuel. Okay. Likewise, if I had an injector that wasn't working and it was clogged completely, but it was electrically okay, then I would see high oxygen content and I would add fuel. I still couldn't fix the problem because the injector is clogged. Um, in certain circumstances, lean injectors, we can add enough fuel to balance the equation, but you'll still see it on the postcat sensor. Okay. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So let me get into Diacom. I'm going to go into that program real quick and show you what the um, program shows you. So basically what we have up here is we have um, bank one short-term fuel trim. So let's talk about that real quick. And in the service manual and in the training, it will talk about this and I'm just gonna add to it. Basically, short-term fuel trim means that the ECM is going to change fuel delivery. And as it changes fuel delivery, this number will change. If it sees too much oxygen, then this number will increase. So this is where the ECM is actually increasing pulse width to that injector bank. Now, it does it for the bank. That means all four cylinders will go up in fuel delivery. It's only looking at the entire um, amount of fuel that's going in the cylinder based on the total amount of oxygen in the exhaust. It can't tell which cylinder has a problem. It does not have individual oxygen sensors. So that will be a quick, very fast response by the ECM to balance the fuel and the air equation to meet AFR. Again, this is all based on the input the oxygen sensor. Okay. So just so you understand that, I just got rid of all of those and I wanted to show you the next phase, which really is graphing and looking at this. So let's look at the graph. And what I've already done to speed it up is I've pulled up bank one short term, bank two short term, and O211 sensor volts. That's going to be the sensor voltage pre-cat. And that is going to be the response from this. Okay. So the other thing I want to do is go back in the ECM tab, click on my magnifier glass, and I want to look at bank two. So I want to see what the bank two voltage is going to do. Other things of interest are obviously engine speed's very critical. Okay, we want to know if the engine's running or if the engine changes RPM state, because if it changes state, then this is going to change and fuel's going to change. You're going to see a change in that very rapidly. Run time's important again, because we have to know that the engines run long enough to go to closed loop status. And engine coolant temperature is very important so that we know that it's gotten into a closed loop status, all right? I don't really need to look at the open loop, closed loop, because I don't think this video does that. One other thing that you may wanna look at though, and that is the pressure inside the intake manifold, okay? If you notice that the pressure is way off, 
then that is going to have a definite reaction, right, to the oxygen content and the fuel delivery. So remember that manifold absolute pressure is going to be something that ECM is going to respond to. Once it gets to a state where it's still in the open loop status, but we've met the temperature, we haven't met the runtime. Remember the minimum runtime is about a minute and a half. So what we've done is we've gotten the oxygen sensor at about 0.96, somewhere around there, volts for this particular engine, which means that it is readable. But where is the graph? The graph is up here. If the graph is up here, not down here like 0.1, then that means the O2 sensor is already reading the oxygen content, which is low. The reason for that is because we are in open loop, and open loop is a rich condition. So think of a MEFI engine. They don't have oxygen sensors. They will always run in this status. They will always run in a fixed fuel rate, and the only thing they're going to respond to is changes in MAP pressure. They don't have oxygen content, so they're always going to run rich. You can't see it. You can't graph it. There's nothing you can do. But just so you understand, the startup position of any catalyst engine is to run rich. Right? Rich is a little cooler. All right? And open loop, if it goes open loop because of a problem, if it was closed loop, you will suddenly see that it will go rich again. And over time, if it shuts the heater down, then this sensor will go back to 1.25 volts, which is non-readable. But you can see it's, it's, it's readable. And the closed loop is all you need to think about right now. All right, as the graph goes along, we will look at what happens. So let's stop the recording again. And you can see the O2 sensor switching. So just focusing on one at a time. And if you craft both, you could kind of look and see if they're both working later. So we're going from 0.8 to 0.1, just about. So the sensor is switching, but it's not perfect. Here's where we went from a open loop status. All right, the fuel trim was at zero. And as we got to the point where we went active, then the engine was lean at that point. So the engine really, what happens is at this point, the engine even on the fuel curve, okay, you can see that there's too much oxygen. So something's going on in the cylinder already, whether it's a previous recording that was bugged and it caused that, but it reacts very rapidly. So if we look at the point where just about the time of the fuel goes active, you'll see that runtime will be very, very quick. So here's 1.52 seconds, that's hundredths of a second. If I go to the point where it switches, that's three hundredths of a second, and it has added essentially 2% fuel to that bank. The same thing has taken place in the other bank. It's added 2% as well. So what does that tell you? Is it tells you both banks are affected, both simultaneously. And they go up about 4% on one bank, 2.8. If I go back here, it stays, you know, 2% off. It's not a huge jump, but it's a little bit, all right? And now what's going to happen is the engine is going to warm up also. Remember, the temperature is going to keep warming up. So what will happen is it may have done this to heat up the cylinder, all right? Get the engine warmer quicker. Might be part of the program. And then as we run through time, it realizes... I need to lean out the fuel. So it's gonna start decreasing the fuel. Now, when we get down here, suddenly, all of a sudden, we go from adding only 0.5% fuel to 1.4% fuel, and then suddenly, the fuel drops off. And notice what happens. The oxygen content goes high. Low is lean, a lean fuel condition, but you have a lot of oxygen. Now, what's the response of the engine? It says, you've got a lot of oxygen here. You should add fuel, right? But it's taking fuel away in both banks. What's the reason? RPM drop. You close the throttle blade. So if you close the throttle blade, then not as much oxygen is going to get into that cylinder, right? So low is lean, a lot of O2, right? Well, that's just an indication that the engine says, the throttle blade has moved. I know that this value is going to go high in O2, right? So I'm going to chop the fuel down until I get to a value or at idle where I can actually switch it, All right? 
and that's just how it responds. Notice that high RPM, the graph is tighter, right? Your sample rates and at idle, the samples are further apart. That's just RPM right there.